Hi friends, it's Linda, and I am here with my very first process video. I am going to um, bring you along with me as I start on two, what I call little cutie journals. And what I mean by that is I make them from, starting from this cute little paper bag. So they end up being half of the size of this paper bag as it's folded in half. So the finished size ends up being about five by six inches. So uh, hopefully this will go well. Um, what I have started, uh, just trying to figure out how to do this on camera since I'm going to make two of them. Typically when I make these little cutie journals, I've been making two at a time because it's almost just as easy to make two as it is to make one because you all of the supplies and the way that I print the signatures, which we're gonna talk about. So um, I'm gonna have one a little bit pre-made and then show you that as I make the second one. Um, so anyway, so as far as I got is starting the cover. And I guess you wonder what the theme is. The theme is nursing. This is the little image that I chose for the cover, to decorate the cover. I'm a nurse and I um, have a daughter-in-law who's a nurse and nurses are, nursing is near and dear to my heart. And I know that there are lots and lots and lots of nurses out there that might love having a little journal um, and it's also a wonderful gift that you can give to a nurse in your life so I thought that might be a fun theme to work on okay so I have my paper bag and I got these on Amazon and they came a hundred in a pack the overall size of the bag in case you are looking to order some is they're just about just shy of 10 inches tall and they are six inches so they're about either six by nine or six by ten I guess they're six by nine because they probably don't count this little the little flap at the top so that's what I start with and what I did here was I chose a fabric for the cover and I chose this um, ticking. It has a vintage ticking look, but you're, I don't know if you shop the Dollar Tree, but I actually found this at the Dollar Tree recently. It was in a little roll. My Dollar Tree here in St. Louis has, um, has some little bits of fabric and I just happened upon this one. And when I was looking for something that had a vintage nursing vibe, um, I found this in my stash, so um, I just tore it, which I'm gonna do here in a minute. I sewed it to the paper bag, but not to the inside, or I did not sew it to, I did not sew the end shut, so we still have that opening there. And then I chose some scrapbook paper to line the inside with, and I also, glued some Tyvek here to reinforce the spine. So let's do this together for the second one. So I have my paper bag. I usually, you can have it go either way. I usually have it so that this envelope is in the back. And this is the rest of the piece of fabric that came from Dollar Tree. It's not very big, but it's it's big enough for two cuties plus, two, two of these little journal covers plus. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna lay this on top. And as you can see, it is almost perfect. I just like to, I tear my fabric and I just like for the little, um, frayed bits to hang over the edge. So as you can see, I'm gonna turn it this way just so I can snip the edge of that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissors. If 
I'm off camera here, I apologize. I'm gonna try very hard to stay in frame. So I'm just gonna put a little snip here and rip this down. It's a little harder to rip when it's this thin at the edge. You sometimes need a little bit for it to be able to rip very well. And then I'll trim that in a bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna see, do I want to use this top or the bottom here? I think I'm gonna use, this one is just, I think I'm gonna use this side, this edge. Okay, so I have that, this, then I'm just gonna give myself a little room here and I think I'll go to the edge of this line here and rip. Okay. Isn't that just the best sound? Love that sound. Okay, okay. I'm just kinda working this a little bit just to It'll fray even a little bit more as we work with it. Just gonna trim a few of those off. Okay. So now what we'll do, is we're gonna lay this on top. And we're gonna cut our paper for the insides and our Tyvek. So, let me find my little piece of Tyvek. I'm not set up for editing yet, so I apologize if uh, I have, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna pull something into this frame here. When I start working on a journal, ooh, I have these Longaberger baskets. Um, this one here has some little sections that um, I usually will collect little bits of ephemera that I wanna use, pull some rubber stamps for the theme. I have this cute little thing and I'll pull some charms. Um, but of course, um, today we're not gonna do all of that. Goodness, I had a little piece of Tyvek all ready to go. And I think it might have gotten away, let's see. our first uh, process video and it is smooth sailing, right? Okay, it's all right. So, I'm gonna move that back. I'm sorry for reaching and jiggling and, and such. Um, let me see if I put it under here. Nope. Okay, so this is the um, scrapbook paper that I chose. I thought it had a cute little, um, almost like a red cross, or it's a bit of a stretch. I didn't have any nursing themed paper, but you really don't need to um, buy a lot of digitals or purchase paper or whatever. You, it's to make journals. You honestly can just use what's in your stash. Um, and I try to do that for the most part, unless there's um, a digital that just totally calls to my heart. So the little Tyvek piece, I'm not gonna be able to find, but I want you to look in the center here and you can see that it's like a priority um, mail envelope. And that, and I'm gonna sneeze, we'll just add to the adventure. <laughs> Excuse me, <coughs> goodness. Okay, so um, those envelopes that come in like a priority mail envelope or other kinds of mailers that you get. You can also order Tyvek material on Amazon. But what I do is anytime I get a shipment or any kind of an envelope um, made of this material, I save it because you typically only need, what I cut here was a one and a half inch strip by six inches and I just glued it onto the paper bag 
here in the center. I folded it in half and then just glued it down this center. And I'm gonna do that again, but obviously not unless um, it shows up here in the next few minutes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this paper to fit and what I left enough in the center so that it wasn't too bulky. I left just a little bit of a um, gap. Okay. So I'm gonna cut, it's about four and a quarter. Will leave me a little bit of a gap. This was a 12 by 12 piece, so the length is going to automatically be um, six inches, so that'll work. This one I cut it four inches just to, um, so that I don't cover up the flap of the pocket right here. I left that paper bag so you could see that it was a pocket there, okay. So this is going to go on this side, and it's a little bit long. Okay, so I am, whoops, I am so exact here, right? Someday I'll laugh, right, if I continue making these videos. I'll laugh at my first attempt, but if I don't try, I'll never know whether or not it's a good idea. I've had a lot of requests from my subscribers to show how I make things, not just to show what I've made. So I'm giving it a whirl. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut that little extra bit off. I could probably eyeball it, but I don't, um, actually I'm gonna have to eyeball this one because I can't find my little mark. Save all these little scraps, little off cuts, because I never know when I might want to do a little collaging inside of a journal. Did I cut the wrong piece? Well, you probably were thinking that, Linda, you grabbed the wrong piece. Yeah. Okay. Oh, are we having fun yet? Another little off cut, right? Okay. All righty then. Okay. So, what we're going to do and I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to do it because I'm not finding that little piece of Tyvek. I could do a gale Augusta Nelly and tell you to talk amongst yourselves. Shall I do that? I think I can grab it pretty quickly from behind me. We're just going to do that. Okay. When I first started watching Gail, um, she would say that, and it just always made me laugh. But I get it now. Because unless you're really great at, um, I got it, unless you're really great at editing, that's what happens. You got to grab things and then, and then what do you do? <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to eyeball this one. And as you can see, this is from a mailer. And it just, it is very difficult to tear this material. So it, it really is a good way to reinforce uh, a spine that you're going to sew through. Because once you start poking holes and um, poking holes and sewing and pulling, um, when you sew in your signatures, it can really... Um, 
cause tearing if if your spine is not strong. Okay, so when I, the way I'm gonna glue this is, I'm just gonna leave one little spot where my sewing machine will go through without any glue. I'm forgetting that I need to uh, keep this on camera. Okay, so I'm gonna put this right smack dab down the center. And a lot of times, I even think I told you that I fold it. Yep, I just forgot to fold it before I glued it on. Okay, now I can glue my little pieces on on the sides. And I'm using um, the Art Glitter Glue. Sometimes I use the um, Sometimes I use the Fabri-Tac. It just kind of depends. So I don't know if you can tell, but this is about where I know my stitching is gonna be. So I just left that little spot free of glue because I am going to run a zigzag around this for reinforcement. Okay. And then this piece is going to go almost all the way to the end of this top of the envelope. I'll put some glue on it and hope I'm in frame here. Doesn't need a ton of glue. I'm just gonna wipe that little spot where I know my stitching is gonna be. Okay. And get that down on there. Okay. I don't care that that's not even. Once the signature is um, sewn in there, it's not gonna be a huge deal. It probably could be a little bit longer and, and even, but when it comes to junk journal making, that's one of the beauties of it, is that nothing has to be perfect. That's the whole idea, right? Okay, so I just wanna make sure that I've got it cut fairly well. Now I'm gonna glue it to my cover, and I'm only gonna glue it because I, um, I'm gonna do a little bit more fraying here just to see what we've got. I'm gonna glue it just to hold it in place while I sew because sometimes um, it'll try to zigzag all over the place, move around while I'm sewing if I don't have it glued down just a bit. Okay, that's a little bit more of a fray. Okay, all right. So let's do this. Yeah, okay. So again, I could use Handy Tack or the fabric glue, but I'm gonna use this. And I'm pretty much just gonna put the glue in the center, whoops, where I'm not gonna be um, sewing. And I don't want the glue in the signature necessarily either down the very center. Um, because I'm going to be sewing there and the glue just makes it a bit difficult to sew through. And, it, and when you're talking about sewing with your machine and, you're, and sewing through glue, um, it's, your machine doesn't really appreciate it very much and you can break needles or it just won't go or whatever. Okay, so let's turn this over. 
I don't typically iron unless I'm making something that really needs to be pristine. But usually, when you glue it down, you can smush the wrinkles out. Okay. Just gonna get rid of some of these little threads here. Okay, so as you can see, they're not exact. This one was a little bit neater that I made off camera simply because my pages um, come a little bit longer to the center. Cover, put my little topper on my glue. Mm hmm. Sorry. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this lace as a little short pocket. And there's two ways to do this. One is to glue the lace on across the bottom and on the sides. You could glue it in the center, but you don't have to because you're gonna sew your signature there. Or um, you can sew it, which is typically what I do is I sew my pockets on. So at this stage, I would just, as I'm sewing, just sew along the, well, in this case, I would just be sewing along the two sides because this end is not gonna get sewn. So this side would be um, glued anyway. But I didn't do that because I hadn't chosen what I was gonna do with the pockets. So since I'm gonna be gluing it on this one, I'll probably just glue it on both of them. So what I do need to do and this is a lace trim that I got at Hobby Lobby. Most of the laces and trims that I use are all vintage. This was one that um, I bought at Hobby Lobby because I didn't have just this size and I wanted something that was pretty much just like this. Um, although since I purchased this, I found um, kind of the mother load of vintage lace at an estate sale, so I won't be needing to buy any for a while. Okay, so I'm just gonna eyeball that, and then we can glue this down, and then we're gonna talk about signatures. Okay, so since this is a little more delicate of a fabric, perhaps a little bit harder to get it to stick, I am going to put a little bit of glue on here. And with these laces, I always wanna make sure that I've got the prettiest side showing up. So I'm just gonna dab a little bit of glue just along this edge. Okay. Whoopsie daisy. And I'm gonna put that down. And then I'm just gonna go right along here. I'm not gonna glue in the center, although it looks like there's just the tiniest little bead there. And that, that's okay. Wouldn't be the end of the world if I glued into the center. It's just something I typically don't. I try not to do. I'm going to give it a little bit of a pull. I like the pockets to have a little bit of give, but not be like too totally droopy. Oh, I think I'm shaking a little bit. I apologize. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of glue just right on the top here, because I don't want to close up my pocket. I'm gonna lift that up. And I'm just gonna touch that down. Give it a little pull, actually. 
and then I'm, I'm gonna cut that once it's all, um, I'm gonna put this little piece of tie back there to keep my pocket open. Okay, all right, and then we'll glue this one. Put some glue across the bottom. Up the side. And then we're gonna let this dry and we're gonna talk about signatures. What I thought I would do today is the cover, although we'll decorate next time when I, after I've got the signatures in. I typically do not decorate my covers until I've got the signatures in, because I, and everybody does it differently. There's no right or wrong way. Um, just because I'm never completely sure, and I always um, wanna be sure that the way that the signatures are in there, that I'm not too bulky with what I'm putting on my covers, and so on. Okay, let me just. Lift that up. I'm actually gonna put this in here just for a second, just to keep it. Okay, so I'm gonna set these up here to dry. And we're gonna talk about signatures. So you can use any kind of paper for your signatures. I have one of the signatures for the one journal. I have it all ready cut and I will uh, put the other one together on the camera. But typically what I will do is you want your, your size to be just slightly less than your cover so that you don't have pages sticking out. Um, what's nice about the size of this little cutie journal is that it is basically an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper um, in half and then fold it in half. So out of one eight and a half inch piece of paper, I can get two pages, which ends up, you know, uh, either two pages for the same journal or one for each journal. So um, that's another reason why I will often do make two of the same. So I usually will do a scrapbook paper or a cardstock or at least a heavier weight um, printable, digital printable for the outside cover just to give it a little bit of a little bit of stability. And then I chose some avocado dyed paper. I made some copies from free public domain images. This is a um, practice sheet for reading EKGs. This is coffee dyed paper that I made. This is one of Gail's, Gail Augustinelli's feed sack digitals that you can find in her on her um, Etsy shop and I will put her in the description box. This is another digital, I don't know if you can tell, it's just very light blue and it's a little bit of a parchment and it is actually a digital that I purchased. There's a hundred different colors and you can, you can print it on the back of white sheets of paper or other digitals to give you a little color so to cover up that just stark white. This is a page for <laughs> Look at these ladies. Do they not make you smile? Are they adorable? And why does every single one of them wear glasses? Is that so funny? So this is a page from a nursing yearbook from 1970. It's actually a copy um, from a digital. So I just love those, <laughs> love those ladies. 
Okay, this is uh, some coffee dyed paper that I bought, I believe from Ray Mercantile on Etsy. I'll link that also. This is a copy of a nursing care plan, which if you're a nurse or know a nurse, while she was a new a nurse while she was in nursing school, you'll know that nursing care plans were something we had to do on every single patient. And they were always a pain in the neck and had to be, I mean, you really had to put a lot of thought and a lot of work into them because they were basically your plan of care for your patient based on whatever was wrong with them. So uh, this will certainly make a nurse smile to see this nursing care plan form in there. And it can be used for journaling or whatever. Um, these small little journals like this, I think people probably use for fun, use it as a little notebook, but you could do some serious journaling in them. Little piece of loose leaf. This is a piece of mulberry paper. I always try to use lots of different types of paper for the texture. Now, junk journals are called junk journals because at their most basic, you can make them out of junk mail and junk um, paper that you would be throwing in the trash can or in the recycle bin. You would literally just pull those papers out and fold them and make journals from them. And you could totally do that. And some people do that. Um, I don't do a lot of that other than I typically will have a junk mail envelope in each of my journals. Um, for me, I use, I try very hard to use papers out of my stash and um, I do like to coffee dye and such, but um, I don't, I'm not, oh, you can also use packaging paper too that comes in like Amazon packaging, that tan or brown paper, those kinds of things. I don't typically use a lot of like post-consumer junk in mine, but I always try to use things that I already own from my stash. Um, and some printables, pages from books and such. This is another one of Gail's feed sack um, digitals. I tried to use digitals that I had already purchased for this um, and not buy any new digitals. So this is some scrapbook paper from my stash and we're back at the back end. So what I do for these little cuties, since they're only gonna have one signature, they really don't, I really can't make them any, with any more than 15 pages because they'll already be gator mouth when I get started before I put anything in there. So that's what I shoot for, 15 pages. Okay, so those are the 15 pages that I chose. And actually there's only 14 there, you probably didn't count. But there was one little thing I wanted to show you that I, I'm sorry for reaching, that I am going to do on camera. Okay, so this is my almost completed signature for this first journal. This, These are the leftover papers, and I'm just going to show you what they look like. So you can see they're cuts. I cut every piece of paper in half, and then I have the other half for the other journal, right? Even these, and now I did print them on a Word document with... Um, one on top and one on bottom and printed it like that. Um, but everything, I have the exact other side of. With the exception of, and this is one other little thing I'm gonna do and then we're gonna, I'm gonna wrap this up. I wanted to show you braille paper in case you're not familiar with it. I am gonna put a piece of braille paper in each of these journals, but before I get started with that, I wanted to show you how I do it. So um, basically, it comes like this. I don't know if it comes any other way, but this is 12 by 12. Um, and what I typically will do is trim it down. So for these little journals, I'm just gonna trim it down to Okay, so I'm gonna trim it to five and a half. Well, first of all, I'm gonna trim this section off because you can see, you could leave it in if you like 
um, if you like those holes there, and it would actually, it's, it's folded in half, so you could use it like a signature and just, you know, just cut if you were doing, depending on what size you were gonna use, just cut it and use it doubled that way as a signature. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one sheet into two pages, one page for each, and I'm gonna cut that edge off because it's that edge that's gonna make it too wide to fit in my journal. Because as I said, it's really about an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet that will create two perfect size pages for this journal. So, okay. Okay, so it's 10 and this is 11. Okay, so we're gonna cut it here at five and a half. Is that right? Let's do five and a fourth. Now we'll do five and a half. Yeah, five and a half. Okay. Oopsie. Okay, so this is going to be an off cut that I can use for making ephemera or even um, to use in a smaller, as a smaller piece in a journal, which is fun to use half pages. Okay. So now I have my two sheets. These are still going to be too long. Okay. So what I really need them to be is eight and a half. Is that right? I don't think I figured that right the first time. No, nope, I didn't. Okay, you gotta love a good. Okay, we're gonna go eight and a half here. So I have a couple more. These are good tag sizes. Okay, now I have it. So very, very stark white. So what are we gonna do about that? Stark white is totally fine. We'll start by saying that everybody has a different, um, a different opinion or just like different things. For me, um, I love vintage so much, I have a hard time with just stark white things. So one simple thing you can do, of course you can coffee dye this and go through that whole process. And I hope I'm not blinding you. I'll try to cover the worst part of the glare. Is you can just put those in there. I have a little spray with some coffee. And just spray it. I do it pretty generously. And it's going to curl up a little bit. That's such a good smell. I'm going to turn it over and do the back side. And then I got I have to let this dry. It's a hot sunny day here, so I'll probably just set it out on my patio for about five minutes and it'll be great. You can also put it in your oven on warm. You just have to be right there and take it out before it gets too crunchy or before you set anything on fire. I do bake my, when I make a lot of coffee dye, I bake it in the oven. But if I just want a couple of pieces, this is what I do. And then um, you can kind of move it around a little bit and get those little, these little droplets to move and create little puddles here and there. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I'm gonna set this outside. Okay, so the next time we get together, the next video that I make, let me pull my items back. I will have sewn I will have sewn um, this other cover and we will I will have both of the signatures put together and we will sew them in. I'll show you how I do that. 
and then we'll begin the decorating. Can you see something I did? Um, and it doesn't matter, I probably prefer this side. Um, I probably wouldn't have done this if I wasn't um, filming and nervous, but this is the kind of thing that honestly, when you're making journals, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna leave these plain. I'm gonna be decorating the covers. I've got, and we're gonna talk about that in the next video. Um, we're gonna talk about sewing, actually sewing in the signatures and then adding pockets and, and such. So um, I will show you the, the pockets that, um, and we'll just try to make all of this on video. I also have some um, lace trim, some vintage that we're gonna add to the spines and I'll, I'll try to do as much of this on camera as I can. So this is just a start. Um, I hope there was something helpful in this. If nothing else, don't be afraid to make mistakes. And they're just variations, right? Um, there's lots of different ways to make a journal and the only way that you can make one is your way. Um, use all of the videos out there for inspiration, but at the end of the day, make it your own and um, put a love into it. It'll be beautiful. All right, thank you for joining me and I look forward to working on these little nursing cutie journals with you very soon. Okay, bye-bye.